travel in things in association with sun destinations, iconic destinations with amazing experiences present in conversation with. I am your host, David Batsoffen, and today I am joined by the general manager of the bank in Johannesburg Rosebank. That's Jessica Reddinger. Jessica, good morning. Welcome to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's only a pleasure. Now, the bank is not a bank anymore. It was a bank, but it's now a hotel and a really, really nice hotel. That's right. Um, yeah, it was redeveloped um, from 2018 to 2020. Right. And there's quite a bit there's quite a bit happening in the building, not only hotel, we have co-shared working space and a fabulous restaurant on the ground floor called Proud Mary. You do indeed. I've eaten at Proud Mary. I've walked through the, the workspace. Um, I've had coffee in your coffee shop and I've sat in this particular space, which I really, really like, which is the entrance to your hotel. But more importantly, why did they repurpose a bank into a hotel? Is this something that's been done before or is this a new innovation for, for old bank buildings? <laughs> um, so definitely a first um, in the Rosebank area for this redevelopment to take place. Hmm. Um, so the, bu the building is originally from the 1970s. And as you can see, the owners really tried to keep that look and feel in terms of the retro decor design that you see on the picture as well, which right. is our beautiful hotel lobby. So they really wanted to keep the essence of the existing building. And then the redevelopment was actually adding eight new stories on top of the existing five stories. <laughs> Yeah, that so it was quite a, big, yeah. <laughs> quite a big development, <clears throat> and the hotel actually forms part of the new build, but um, all the existing structure was kept, which is amazing. So you'll see um, throughout the space and of the existing building, some pillars and things like that that were pre-existing, and they basically just stripped it down to the essence, and they really kept with that in terms of design. If people look up, and most people don't, I did because I thought you're the light fittings were really spectacular. And then you realize that the ceiling space is raw concrete. And it's the same in, yeah. in some of the room, in the room that we spent for the weekend uh, or where we spent the weekend. That roof as well, or the ceiling there, is also raw concrete. And although people may go, mm, not so sure, it adds a whole nother layer to the decor of the hotel. And what you've put in, actually softens that ceiling. That's right. So it's really that um, that look and feel between a beautiful premium finished product and keeping it a little bit raw and industrial. But like yeah. you said, adding in those soft touches and those design elements. So it really brings it to life. Um, you can see a little bit of the ceiling peeping out behind me in this room. So all our hotel rooms have exposed ceilings, <laughs> but they really are featured and it really lends to the look and feel and the design as well. I think it's a, it gives you another or it gives you a unique selling point. I mean, how many hotels are like this? I did ask somebody and they said they don't exist anymore. I'd wondered if you'd kept the vaults because those would have been really nice to have intimate dinners in. But I believe they're gone. <laughs> yeah. So the vaults were actually um, located in the basement mm -hmm. and um Obviously, being a 1970s building, the parking is quite um, limited. <laughs> so, and and the parking bays are quite small, not for these new SUVs that we drive nowadays. So, they did unfortunately have to remove the vault from the the basement area to make space for additional parking. I'm glad you spoke about parking because you feel like a rock star when when you arrive at the bank. Because I was told afterwards, because of the way the cars have to be parked. They can't leave it up to the drivers to do it. You have to have your staff park the cars. So you get out at the entrance. Uh, very nice people come take your vehicles. You may never see them again, um, but, but they vanish into the bowels of your hotel. You get a WhatsApp message with a photograph of where your car is parked. So you know that it's safe. And then all it is is a WhatsApp when you want to leave and your car is delivered back to the front door again. Yeah, so quite a unique solution. Like I said, the parking is quite limited. So in order to create more space, we have car lifts in the basement. So you can basically park a car in a car lift, lift it up and park a car underneath. So you can double park in all the bays. Right. So it's quite an innovative solution. And also, um, as far as I know, first of its kind for a hotel in Johannesburg. 
Um, we're quite innovative here, but yes, it does work really well and quite seamlessly with the WhatsApp groups. And I know it's very new for South Africa. Some people are hesitant to hand their car keys over, <laughs> but all the valet drivers are in our uniform with name tags. So they're really easily recognizable. Yeah. And they're all wearing, wearing Felskun shoes, similar to mine. So we, we bond. That is right. The drivers and I. <laughs> yeah. We also like local as lacquer. So where mm. we can, we try to partner with local suppliers as well. Tell me a bit about the hotel group. Is this a first for um, for the group in South Africa, for VOCO so, and for um, IHG? So this VOCO in particular is the first on the African continent. Right. Um, the VOCO brand is really new for the Intercontinental Hotel Group. It was launched in 2018, but a very fast-growing brand. Um, a pro there's approximately 100 hotels either open in conversion or building phase or signed up. So it's wow. a very fast okay. brand that's gone to market. But um, this building really lends to the essence of the Voco brand. Each Voco is unique in the locale that surrounds the hotel, or in this case, um, very art centric. You can see the artwork behind me as well. Um, so it being in Rosebank, it really lends to that. So that's also why the choice of the Voco brand was used for this building. Fair enough. Now back to the, the entrance and we were talking staff a moment ago. Your staff compliment is something special. Each and every one of them that I interacted with, big smiles, friendly, couldn't do, en couldn't do enough. Um, they are absolute ambassadors for your brand. They really and truly are. So vo the word voco is actually a Latin word, which means to invite or to, to come together. So that's really right. the essence of the brand. And voco is an unstuffy, charming brand, and everyone is your host from myself to the doorman to the room attendant. And that's the ethos that we have here. So that's why, and, and the staff are really great. They were all chosen for their wonderful personalities. <laughs> and that's why they and that's why they work at VOCO because they live those values with us. Fair enough. I want to share with, with uh, my, my viewers, the fact that I spent the, the my birthday weekend um, at yes. this hotel. And we walked around the corner to the room that we were allocated. And all I heard was, no, no, you can't come in yet. I haven't finished. And one of the <laughs> staff was busy putting balloons and some cake in. And they hadn't quite finished what they wanted to do. So my wife and I stood in the corridor for a moment or two while they finished up. And then she closed the door and then we had to open it again and pretend to go, who are we? didn't know what was going on, which was wonderful. It really, it made my day. It really and truly did. Yeah, we really try to personalize guest stays and really try to get to know little elements about them so that we can make their stay special. So, and we love to celebrate. Um, we have a flamingo, which is one of our mascots, which also represents Proud Mary and the Voco life. Right. So as you can see, we like to have a little bit of fun. So um, that's definitely Voco style that you were experiencing on your stay. And, and the other thing is we we're coming down in the elevator for dinner. And a guy steps into the elevator and he's wearing a uniform. Um, I mean, an army uniform. And he introduces us to himself to us as Bobby Wine, the people's president of Uganda. No security, <laughs> nothing. And we have the most awesome chat going down in the elevator. Meet a group of people that, he, that are waiting for him in the foyer. I have a photograph taken with him. I'm still not touched by security, guys. And then he leaves <laughs> and we watched him on the news a little bit later. So it was a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I'm sure you've got people in and out like that all the time, sort of below the radar, not looking to, to sort of go in and out of a huge hotel where there's maybe too much attention focused on them. Yeah, that's right. So we, we have had some um, some celebrities stay with us and they really do feel at home here. And that's why they choose Voco um, for that whole um, host element that the staff gives. They make you feel at home. We want you to relax and to really be part of the Voco family when you're here. Now, you sitting in a room that's pink-ish. Yes, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> um, we stayed in a room that was blue. That's right. No. So the rooms, the rooms alternate between pink and blue on the floors. Okay. And and if people look carefully, they'll see there's a 
um, a cloche, a glass cloche over there. And my birthday cake was under that. <laughs> um, the beds, your linen, the rooms are beautifully appointed. Um, we didn't, once we got into bed, we didn't want to get out of it again. I have to say this, they are extremely comfortable. So the beds are actually, this bed, Meg, is specifically designed for the Voco brand. It's a brand called Hypnos. Um, ah. And all Vocos, all Vocos throughout the world have them. And yes, they are really comfy. It is most probably the only bed because I had to try some of the rooms out pre-opening, right? I'm sure it is you most. It is the only bed I have ever woken up sleeping diagonally. So definitely a great <laughs> night's sleep. <laughs> yes, that is so funny. Sleeping diagonally. Now, you see, you say it's it's done specifically for Voco. Does that mean that this particular mattress is not available to the general public? No, it is available for purchase. The supply is actually located in Cape Town. And ah. if any guest wants to purchase one, we'll put them in contact with the salesperson that we have a really great relationship with. And another element to add is that the mattresses are actually composed of a lot of recycled material. So there's a big focus really trying to be sustainable in using um, like minimal single plastics. I'm sure you might have noticed the room service menus are QR coded on the TV Correct. so that we don't have we don't have unnecessary pieces of paper in the room. So it's really yeah. only the essentials and we try to be as sustainable as, as, as possible. Which is really great. The only reason I ask about the, the mattress is the mattress we currently have at home. That's how we found ours. We went to somewhere for a weekend. We really liked the mattress. We stripped the bed down the morning we left, found the label, <laughs> found a supplier and bought the mattress. It was as simple as that. Amazing. <laughs> I, I also have a hospitality. I also have a hospitality grade bed at home as well. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> makes a difference. It does. It does indeed. It does indeed. And those only show up when you go somewhere where they're not hospitality grade, and you hop on the bed, yeah. and your partner gets flung out the other side because of <laughs> like being in a in a lifeboat at sea type of thing. Um, <laughs> other thing I want to compliment you on are these Antipodes um, shampoo body wash and conditioner because often I used to wear glasses I don't anymore but you step into a shower and there are three tiny little bottles with labels you can barely read with glasses let alone without but here Antipodes big um, font you can read it with no problems at all so it's a great all natural product and it really is all natural. Um, it it's definitely is. I have the most sensitive scalp on earth. And of course, I've also tested these out. Um, beautiful soft hair with no, no irritation. So Antipodes, all natural, great product. And also, like you said, no more small little bottles. Um, obviously, that's quite a bit of recycling that has to take place. So it's also a sustainable element um, for the hotel as well, that we have these big pump bottles so that we don't have to worry about a lot of plastic possibly yeah. going to landfill and not being recycled properly. But yeah, really great products and guests comment on them all the time. Because um, when we walked in the t and turned the TV on, there is sort of things to remember when you're at VOCO, one of which is all our items are tagged. So don't try and take <laughs> them out. Of but I was trying to figure out what and how. Um, I don't want to give away, I don't want you to give away any secrets because then you'll start losing stuff and you'll blame me for it. But I'm sure back in the good old days before you did this type of thing, um, large pump bottles, those smaller bottles, the soap went, um, the slippers went, sometimes even gowns, I'm sure, uh, vanished in people's luggage by accident. <laughs> yes, by accident. <laughs> we did used to have items that would go for a walk. Um, yeah, so it's really also just, I suppose, a sustainable element as well in that we really try to maintain what we have in the hotel and that's why the items are tagged. <laughs> but um, if somebody does want to purchase anything from the hotel, they're more than welcome to. I know the gowns are lovely. Um, we um, have in the higher room categories, we have beautiful embroidered laundry bags that some guests have wanted to purchase because they do like to travel with them to separate their clothing mm -hmm. in their bag. So anything is available for purchase. Um, yeah, but otherwise we, we ask guests to please leave the items in the room. <laughs> okay, now talk, talking about gowns, um, I tried on one of your gowns. I don't know what body shape 
is being utilized <laughs> <laughs> because it didn't fit me in any way, shape or form. And I thought that maybe um, it would be nice or just different is when the guests checked in, if your staff said, you know, what size gown would you like? And then while you're filling out paperwork, they just put them in the rooms. So at least you've got a gown that fits rather than one that you go, no, nah, I'll just have to wander around either naked or in the clothes that I came with. <laughs> um, so we understand that people come in all shapes and sizes, <laughs> right. especially some men. Some men are obviously a lot taller and yeah. differently built. So we do have a whole host of sizes. We obviously just pop a standard one in a room. So okay. if anybody does require a bigger size, um, you know, for length or, um, you know, if they've got broader shoulders, those types of things, housekeeping is always on standby to bring a different size to the room. But a great idea to ask guests on arrival as well. Okay. And the other thing that I think I mentioned to you or mentioned in the article that I wrote about the hotel was when I was in Dubai, I noticed that all the hotels that I walked in and out of had a very specific aroma to them. Some were very intense and some were a little bit more subtle. And I asked one of the marketing guys and he said that every hotel in Dubai has a signature aroma or a signature fragrance, which they pump throughout the hotel, which, which I don't know, just added then um, a layer that I'd never experienced before. And I've never experienced that here in South Africa. So I'm um, downstairs in the public areas. We don't have a signature scent down there because we obviously share the space with Proud Mary on the ground floor. Right. And we want people, we want people's taste buds to be tantalized by the Proud Mary smells. So um, we don't have anything downstairs, but in all the rooms, I don't know if you noticed, we actually have the little, the Voco diffusers. Uh, okay. so, so we place our signature scents in all of our hotel rooms. Uh, okay. Because talking about Proud Mary, and I'll be chatting to them uh, later. So um, Fabulous. I, I, don't, I don't want to go into too much depth, but suffice it to say that some diners sitting next to us were tackling tomahawk steaks. I have never seen <laughs> a piece of meat that size. It's 1.3 kilos. How can you, I, know. I mean, you can feed an entire country, let alone family, with a steak that size. And I didn't sit around long enough to see if they actually finished those steaks. That would be very impressive if they did. I've never <laughs> ordered one myself, but I've seen them going out to tables. Yes, really, really big and generous, that's for sure. They are indeed. So for people who are listening to us or watching us, I should say, and going, all right, so you've spoken about the hotel and it was a converted bank. Where is it so that we can come and visit? Sure. So right in the heart of Rosebank, we're at number 24 Craddock Avenue. So literally situated in between the mall and the zone. That's right. most probably two that people would know the most. Um, so as you head up Craddock, we're on your right-hand side. You can't miss the beautiful matte black building that stands out in the skyline. Um, I, I believe that that building or your building, not that building, wouldn't look out of place in Gotham City. I was ex fully expecting <laughs> to see Batman posed on one of the pardon me on one of the ramparts waiting for the signal <laughs> before he left off and off into the darkness he went it's definitely something unique especially mm. during the day but in the evening with the lights that shine up the building it yeah. definitely does add a beautiful element it does indeed um we've spoken about blue and pink rooms and you spoke about the fact that they alternate are the rooms different? Do you have different categories of room? And if so, what would those be, um, Jessica? Sure. So um, we have an entry level room, which is a standard room. And then the room I'm currently in is called a premium room, which is one level up. And then we have a grand room with a shower and then grand room with a bath and shower, which I think is the room type you stayed in. Correct. And then, and then we have one one bedroom suite. Um, the ground with bath and shower are slightly limited, purely for the fact from a sustainability point of view. Mm. Majority of our rooms have showers, so we try to use less water as well. But obviously some guests do prefer a bath over a shower, so we have that avail available as well. I'd, and well, all, 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 yeah. Sorry, no, I was just going to say all that, all that, all those room types, if you want to see any pictures, they're all on our website at vocohotels.com. You, I was going to get there. You beat me to it. Um, <laughs> vocohotels.com. The the bath v shower, 
um, mm -hmm. seems to be an ongoing, um, not fight, but ongoing concern with, for hotels, I'm sure, is do you put both? Do you put one? And if so, which one is it? Um, and I think shower is the easier option because most people will shower. A lot of people like a bath. Um, but then there's a lot of water utilized in the bath because you don't want to get into a bath that's only like 10 centimeters deep. You you want to you want to be swimming in the thing. You want to use the, all the hot water available in the hotel, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So in my in my opinion, um, definitely showers from a sustainability yeah. point of view. And like you mentioned, the water usage is definitely a factor that hoteliers are now taking into consideration. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to have a bath, in my opinion, it has to be an amazing freestanding bath like we have. You, you better Definitely believe it. Not, not a shower in a bath. It's got to be a freestanding <laughs> no, bath so no. that you can really enjoy it. Yeah, Yeah, I'm sorry. Those shower in a bath things, no, doesn't work for me. Now we know all about the hotel. So let me ask you, if I may, about Jessica. If I take Jessica yeah. back to 18-year-old Jessica, you're writing matric or um, you there or thereabouts, did you know that this is what you wanted to do? Or did your career path getting here have more twists and turns than Monroe Drive? So um, I didn't know what I wanted to do after school, actually. And I'm originally from KwaZulu-Natal, so I moved with my sister, who's older than me. I moved with her to Durban and had to find work until right. I had decided what I wanted to do. So I actually started waitressing in the Protea Hotel Edward, a, a beautiful landmark. A beautiful on the, on hotel. Durban, yeah. On the Durban beachfront. And that's how I started my hospitality career. I was offered an in-service traineeship. And then my love for not just hotel guests, but for staff and wanting to develop people and really being surrounded by people all the time in my environment. That's where it all started. Right. So I've, I've basically worked in every single department of the hotel. I've even done my time as a chef in, in, the, in the commercial kitchen. I've cleaned rooms. I've worked in banqueting. I've basically done it all. So really a passion for this industry. And, um, you know, I find myself in this beautiful hotel and being the general manager. So it's clear testament that hard work does pay off at the end. Well, th this is obviously true. And when we first met, I mean, it was so, you are so unassuming that people would not expect you to be running a hotel like this. And uh, it's not a slight at you at all. It's just, you are so immersed in what you're doing. Well, this is the way I perceived it. And, and you are at ease with your staff and they're, more importantly at ease with you you know there's no sort of bowing and scraping and you know with more the mams and the sirs and all of that type of thing it's like coming home to friends and it's wonderful exactly you know um it definitely uh a different take on on hospitality management definitely not old school at all there is obviously a hierarchy and we all respect yeah. each other but we're we're like a family here we spend most of our time at work so we i make sure it's a fun place for people to be and you know everybody's doors open and we're a small dynamic team so we've all got to jump in and help each other out when we have to so that's why we just really try and make it as fun as possible here I, I do want to ask you about your best and worst guests, but I'm scared. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to put yourself on a spot because one of those guests might just be watching and you go, aha, and then you get cancelled. <laughs> and I don't want any of that to happen. But I'm sure that um, the way you interact with guests nowadays is very different from the way that it happened maybe in the 60s and 70s in Durban, for instance. Yeah, exactly. So um, also the, this brand also lends to being um, obviously friendly, but not familiar. So um, a lot of on the location of the hotel, a lot of the hotel guests are return guests. So really have gotten to know them over time, what they like, what they don't like who they are, some of them stay week on week. So we really know them well. Um, and obviously, it's great to see them in public areas, have a bit of a chat with them, a catch up, see how they're doing, how their families are doing, which is great. We have had one or two naughty guests, which we've had to deal with, but as in every hotel that does happen. But um, because of obviously the caliber of the hotel that, that VOCO is, 
Um, it's, it's a premium product. So we have a really great caliber of guests staying with us. So not too many naughty ones. <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure they asked um, to vacate very nicely. Um, yes, I, and, I say it with a smile on my face. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do, Jessica. Backed up by large men in dark suits with white ties. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so where to from here? For, for the brand and and maybe for Jessica herself? Sure. So um, for the Intercontinental Hotels Group, there are obviously other hotels within Johannesburg and Cape Town. Holiday Inn, Intercontinental, Holiday Inn Express also fall under this umbrella of hotels. So those are throughout. And there's um, one or two exciting projects that are in the pipeline. So I know one has been announced by Intercontinental Hotels Group. There's um, the table bay in Cape Town is going to go through a full refurbishment and become an Intercontinental later oh, this year. Because that is a so that's beautiful great. hotel. I've stayed there stunning. and you've either got stunning views out over the, over the ocean or even better views of the mountain and the harbour. Yeah, so that's a, that's an amazing project that's going to take place. And then um, we are hoping by the end of this week that there's going to be an announcement. I can't say too much at this point. Okay. So please, please watch our please watch our social social pages and see what's coming. So either the end of today or possibly early next week, there should be another announcement for another beautiful hotel that should come on board. Wonderful. We'll keep our then, eyes open for that. And then, um, sorry, you were going to say, and then? No, yes. and but then that's for not, myself. But that's not all. <laughs> but that's not all. For myself, I work for Valor Hospitality Partners, which are based in Cape Town. This is their flagship hotel in Johannesburg. Um, an amazing group of supportive people that I work for and that have also helped to really shape and create this hotel with me. So I'm very sure that I will um, be furthering my career path with them in the near future. Um, either either to another hotel or possibly above hotel level. That's wonderful. And I, I wish you all the very best going forward. Um, talking about announcements, do, does the hotel offer weekend specials? And we, we're not talking about the coffee shop and the restaurant at the moment. Um, and I'm sure they run specials every now and again. But the hotel itself, do they do events or, or offer, I don't know, Valentine's Day weekends? that type of thing? So um, we do run promotions from time to time. Um, we've actually got a fun promotion that's currently taking place called the Voco Vault. It's all over our social media pages so people can go look at all the terms and conditions and things like that. But if you stay, if you stay with the hotel, you need to go find some clues and uh, bring them <laughs> to the front desk. It's very fun. And there's actually a grand prize, which will be announced at the end of August, that has the value of 100,000 Rand. So wow. it's a massive prize. It's very exciting. Um, and then on our web page and the packages, there's a few lifestyle packages, one that includes spa, another one that, that includes a red bus tour, a family package. So we do update those from time to time. So people can just pop onto our web page and have a look under the packages tab and they're always listed there. That's wonderful. Jessica, once again, um, let's give out contact details for the for the hotel. Sure. So easiest place is um, vocohotels.com. Everything is listed on there. Alternatively, our socials is voco underscore Johannesburg underscore Rosebank. And um, that's both Facebook and Instagram to go and have a look at our beautiful hotel there. Um, and then those are most probably the easiest ways to, to have a look and to get hold of or to message. Great stuff. My guest today um, on In Conversation With has been Jessica Redinger, who is the general manager of Vo this particular Voca Hotel called The Bank. And next time you're in Rosebank, just wander past. And in fact, stop in. They've got an awesome coffee shop. My wife is a coffee uh, aficionado, and she swears by your coffee. She really and truly does. We didn't get to eat the cakes because, because cake. Oh, that's the other <laughs> thing. What other hotel? <laughs> the Crusade uh, coffee mugs in their rooms, which I think is, again, uh, another unique sp um, selling point for you guys. So I wish you all the very, very best. Stay warm um, because it's cold in Joburg at the moment. 
And thank you very much for making my birthday weekend very special. And I hope people watching this will decide to make their special event even more special by staying at the bank in Rosebank. Jessica, once again, thanks for being a guest. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.